My name is Chris Berg. I'm CEO and head chef of a company called Data Kitchen. You know, we're focused on bringing an idea called data ops to the market. And I guess our vision as a company is that we think data ops is a better way for analytic teams with all their tools and all their data and all their people to work. And so our vision is that every data and analytic team works according to the data ops principles. And what are those principles? Well, given that we're in Cambridge, Massachusetts, we wrote a manifesto and it's surprisingly popular. We've had over 6,000 people sign it. And so we're a software company based in Cambridge outside of Boston. We've incorporated in 2014. And now we're up to about 30 people and we have about 5 million in annual recurring revenue. So how do you really go fast? How do you not break things and have high errors? And how do you let people innovate with the tools that they have? And that's the genesis of the company. What we're trying to say is data ops is iterative development or do work in iterations. And iterations are hard because iterating on an analytic, you may actually change a lot of stuff in the value chain behind it or the set of tools and technologies. And also there are these dichotomies that I've noticed in, in analytics, right? You wanna develop something, but then you're afraid to break production to put it in. You want to experiment, but you also wanna be able to reproduce your experiments. There's this big challenge that we'll talk about at the end between sort of central control and then self-service autonomy. And then how do you reuse and collaborate and, and, and share? And so these are sort of goals of the data ops idea. Having multiple errors. So number one, it causes your business customer to not trust the data. Um, number two, it causes your team to run around trying to fix errors, which reduces their productivity. And oftentimes it's the most talented person on your team that's running around to fix errors. So errors are actually a big cause of slowness and velocity, loss of trust in data. Likewise, teams struggle to deploy changes into production. And I'm continually surprised at talking to teams who are taking months to deploy 10 lines of SQL into production or a data science team that's got 10 models, but only one of them has actually seen the light of day. Another way is to think of it as a mindset change. So what is data ops, right? I guess I think of it as it's a set of technical practices and cultural norms and architecture patterns that enable really rapid experimentation and innovation focused on making your customers successful. And it's really about having low error rates. And it's about collaboration across people and tools and data. And then finally, putting my uh, manager hat on, it's really about measurement and monitoring of results. Because the goal is to be agile. We actually think there's a technical environment and an architecture pattern that you need to fit all of the tools that you currently have in, in order to do this. I think that process of focusing from a managerial perspective on low defects and being honest about the defects actually has this whole set of huge benefits because you are then able to reduce the amount of rework, the amount of stress your team has, the amount of time it takes to scramble to fix things. And oftentimes the people who are fixing those errors rapidly are often the best on your team. And so that, in essence, reduces the throughput of creative ideas and innovations. We're just taking those ideas and saying, hey, these management ideas of cycle time, you know, quality, measurement, safety, really need to apply in the data and analytics world. And that's really what data ops is. I think of analytic processes like manufacturing. You run a factory, whether you like it or not, you're running a factory. And so it's a multi-tool complicated factory. And so think of it like that. You are also like a software development team in that your team with their diverse tools and their diverse roles, data engineers, scientists, analysts, and their diverse customers are actually creating code. And that code itself is complexity, is a hairball of complexity. And how do you deal with lots of people working on the same thing at the same time so they don't run into each other. And how do you deal with this complexity where you change one thing in one place and it breaks something in so somewhere else? The idea is that you need to take that code and get it from the idea phase into production so that you can get feedback. And then the feedback itself, you should take and iterate. And so um, you've got to focus both on orchestration and deployment at the same time, which is actually really hard. You don't want to learn about errors and data quality issues from your customers. And it's better to deliver uh, insight faster because you maximize the amount of learning that you do. That idea of being data-driven excites people. 
because if you discover errors earlier, you can fix them earlier, you reduce the distrust of data, you reduce the amount of crazy fix time, and it leaves more room for you to do the good creative stuff, which is the insight that your customer wants.